everybody. This is lesson 13, our last lesson, and I'm really sad that we're coming to an end, but I'm so glad we have such a wonderful ending to our story that we've been going through for the 13 weeks. And so, for the last time, I just want to welcome all of you. I want to welcome Bree and Eden and Phoebe and Chloe and Micah and Isaac and R.C., Bo, Milo, TJ, Andrew, Finn, Matthew, Noah, did I get everybody? If I missed you this time, I am so sorry, but I have you here in my heart. So anyway, today I'm going to show you some pictures just to remind you of the path that we've been on as we've traveled through the Old Testament and seen God keeping his pro promises. At the very beginning, we saw as God kept promises to Adam and Eve, he promised that one day someone very special would be born into their family. Do you remember who that would be? Yeah, a Savior who is Jesus. That's right. God keeps his promises. And then we saw Noah. What did God promise Noah? To save his family. He was going to save his family. Yes, he would. And that the earth would never flood again. God does keep his promises. And who are the people in this family? Look at those people. Abraham, Sarah, and baby Isaac. And what promise did God give to Abraham? With many, many, many children. <laughs> and he would start with a child when they were very, very old, in their old age. Nothing is too hard for God. And then we have another family. We see this family right here. Right, yeah, this, this one, right? And look at that family. That is Jacob's family. And you know, it seems like something very sad happened to Jacob because his son Joseph, you know, w went to, to Egypt and he was in jail and his brothers had sold him. And all those seemed like bad things, but it worked out that God kept his promise to Jacob's family because when they were starving, there was food for them in Egypt because of Joseph. And then we had, we, had, um, we had David. Oh, no, I think we had, who did we have next? We had Samuel. <laughs> I'm trying to remember on our, <laughs> we had Samuel. And Samuel, he grew up to serve God, and God blessed him. And he listened to God's vo voice and trusted and obeyed. And then we had David and Nathan. And Nathan came to David and told him not to build that temple. And he promised him that he would have a, a family, but it was going to be God's family, and Jesus would come through that family. Many years later, God definitely keeps his promises. And now we have our final one, because God's many, many years passed by. By, and finally, it was the right time for God to keep his promise. In God's word, it tells us what happened. God sent an angel. Oh, not that way. Yeah. God sent an angel to a young woman named Mary, who was part of Abraham and David's family. The angel told Mary that God had chosen her to be the mother of the promised Savior. An angel also appeared to a man named Joseph in a dream. Joseph was part of David's family, too. The angel said, Joseph, do not be afraid or take Mary home to be your wife. You will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. And they traveled to the, to the town of Bethlehem, and they didn't have to place, a place to stay in Bethlehem. So when baby Jesus was born, she wrapped him in cloths and laid him in a manger. That's a box where food is placed for animals to eat. And even though Mary and Joseph didn't have a better cradle for their newborn, they were very glad that God had kept his promise to send the Savior. And did they obey God? They did. They named the baby Jesus, just as God had commanded. And when Jesus grew up, he went everywhere doing the work his heavenly father had given him to do. He healed the sick. He blessed little children. He taught his disciples. Then he did the most wonderful thing of all for his people. Jesus died on the cross to pay for all our sins. Jesus, God's son, was willing to go to the cross to take the punishment we should have had. But on the third day after his death on that cross, Jesus came back to life, 
life. He is alive now, and one day we will live with him forever if we believe in him as our Savior and King. God loves us so very much. All along, he had a plan to save his people. He promised to send a Savior, and he kept his promise. God always keeps his promises. And Francie, for the last time, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions here and see how Francie was listening. You see if you could answer before Francie. How did God keep his promise of a Savior? He sent his son as a baby. He did. And um, he gave his baby a name, and his name was what? Jesus. You know what Jesus means? That means save his people from his, their sins. Yes, he was going to be a savior. Well, why do I need a savior? What do we need saving from? Why? I mean, what did Jesus save us from? What was the problem? Because we're all sinners. We're all sinners, and we deserve punishment. But Jesus took that punishment for us, and we are so thankful for that. And we have a final memory verse for this week, and here we are. Today, our Verses, today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. Luke 2.11. One more time. Today in the town of David, David, remember he promised David. In the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. Luke 2.11. And you have the sticker that goes with that where of the manger where Jesus was born that you can put on that. And then... On the back, God sent his son to be your savior. Trace over the name in the space below. And you can trace the name of Jesus. You notice we don't draw pictures of God. So we don't draw pictures of Jesus, but we can trace his name. And if you want to draw the stable in Mary and Joseph, you can do that if you'd like to. So that is our memory verse. And then finally... Um, Oh, can we have one more song? Do you think that would be okay? Which, go ahead and play a song for us. Thank you. my prayer that we will be like him you know we started with Adam and Eve and we've been going all through the Bible but the story doesn't end here the story does not end with Jesus being born he became our Savior and someday he is coming back he is coming back again he's preparing a place for us now also in reviewing everything that we've done these 13 weeks in your packet you have these story cards and these aren't matching like you did last week. But on these story cards, 
you'll tear them apart and you'll lay them face down. And then you will draw a card. I've seen get over here where you can see. You will draw a card and see if you can match it to where on the map it came. What part of the path was it on? And see if you can tell what that story was. See if you can go through all 13 cards with that. And uh, you remember all of our stories. And finally, on your, on your take home paper, you have the story on the beginning. But I want to tell you, I love this picture because on this picture, we have all the stories that we have had the 13 weeks, but they're all leading towards Jesus being born in the manger. All of the stories, they're all going the same direction. And if you follow it, you'll see they all point to Jesus. And then you're going to try to find all those different stories in this picture and circle them. So this was my favorite one of all 13. I really liked it. And on the back, as always, things for you to do with your family. So, Francie, you want to say goodbye? <laughs> Everybody. Huh? I want to pray. Um, Francie's going to pray for us. No? <laughs> I'll pray for us. I'll pray. I'm shy. <laughs> That's okay. We, we've just had such a good time. We're sorry for it to see it in. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you that everything points to Jesus. And Father, you're still at work, and, and Jesus is still at work, and you're doing a work in us. And even though we're, we're your children, Father, you have us growing, just like earthly children, becoming more and more like your son. And that is our prayer, that we, will, we would continue that journey and be with each child who's been watching this, these programs, Father, and bless them and watch over them. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And children, even though we haven't seen you for a while, you've been on our hearts and we've missed you. And we'll try to send you some more things, won't we, Francie? Yes. And I won't see you for a while. I'll be gone for a little while, but I will be seeing you again. So I look forward to that time. So bye, everybody.